right uh, and slightly uh, uh, straight ahead and uh, all kind of Locked in the earth are the riches that propel our modern world. And woven throughout the course of human history is the saga of a perpetual search from the mines of King Solomon to the black gold of the 20th century. <coughs> Gathered from Earth's far frontiers, they have built the tools of war and the cities of peace. In the rocks of planet Earth are the raw materials of our technology. And from the Earth we have fashioned the monuments of our modern age. thousand years of human civilization is linked to an ancient struggle of titans as the power of the sun and the forces within the earth wrestle over the thin crust that wraps our planet. Over hundreds of millions of years they have created and distributed the great treasures of this earth. Around the globe, scientists search to understand the creation of Earth's treasures. At the heart of the search, two urgent questions. How long will they last? And to find them, how far must we go? A cedar swamp in Maine holds clues that may affect the energy resources of tomorrow. We need to get farther in. Find a good exposure of it. In a subterranean world, scientists unravel a geological mystery of incredible wealth. And in the skies, high above the Nevada desert, new eyes of science look down on Earth. What they see could revolutionize our understanding of the planet. Scientists have entered a world that until now was unexplored. Our future will be determined by what they find. In New York City, a world-famous auction house offers items of exquisite design and extraordinary value to a discriminating clientele. $25,000 for a $24,000 now, $25,000, $26,000 this year. I had $26,000 for a $26,000, $26,000. Well, the bid's up front and against the room now at $26,000 all done. Sold for $26,000, Edith Black. Sold for $110,000 sold now for $135,000. All right, what should we say to start this? $500,000 to start it? At In the bidding over a flawless blue diamond, it is easily forgotten that these works of elegant beauty were transformed from stones dug from the ground. $850,000 at $850,000, $875,000 now, $900,000 in the center of the room now. Down it goes then at $900,000 in the center of the room at $900,000. $900,000. Stones of astonishing value, yet of far greater worth than the brightest diamond, are mineral treasures that have played a pivotal part in human history. In Pittsburgh, at the Carnegie Institute's Hillman Hall of Minerals, fantastic specimens are displayed and admired as works of art. Formed by forces originating deep within the earth and from our distant sun, they are of a seemingly infinite variety. Incredibly, they are all examples of nature's artistry, transformed by water, molten heat, sun and time.
Exquisitely shaped, economic and precious metals alike rival the finest creations of craftsmen. In a museum gallery, they are treasures from a jewel box earth. Although the treasures of the earth are widespread, the places where they are concentrated and accessible are not. The splendor of gold and silver light our world, as if glittering brightly from afar. Royalty among metals, they are mined in but a few regions around the globe. Shining forth are the sources of our most basic metals. Among them are lead, zinc, copper, and iron. Just 150 sites worldwide account for more than three quarters of the metals and minerals essential to modern industry. Fueling the fires of our age are deposits of fossil fuels. Scattered around the globe, they are formed from prehistoric plants and microscopic animals of ancient times. In North America and Asia are the major deposits of coal. Oil and natural gas are spread among the continents, but a full 60% of the world's known supplies are beneath the Persian Gulf. Petroleum dominates modern history, much as another resource dominated the Mediterranean world of ancient times. From the froth of the sea came Aphrodite, goddess of fertility and love. A Greek poet named this beach in Cyprus as her birthplace. Aphrodite was born into the richest land in the classical world. For in the mountains that rise from this sea lay a phenomenal treasure, the copper mines of ancient Cyprus. Copper ingots bearing the stamp of Cyprus and cast in the shape of hides were carried throughout the Mediterranean world. Under the patronage of the Mycenaean god Encomi, the island supplied much of the copper for the Bronze Age. From its mines and smelters came the utensils of the hearth. Other anvils forged the metal into instruments of war. Cyprus, in fact, means copper, and from 4,000 years before the birth of Christ until the decline of the Roman Empire, the mines of Cyprus were as vital to the ancient world as the oil of the Persian Gulf is to modern times. Today, ruins and deserted caverns are all that remain of that great age long ago. The mines of Cyprus lay idle for 1,600 years. But in 1913, after studying the accounts written by ancient Romans, an American geologist rediscovered the mines. Once more, they yielded up their riches, and mine tailings dotted the foothills of the Trodos Mountains. By the late 1950s, Cyprus began to interest geologists for other reasons. Gorgos Constantino, now head of the Cyprus Geological Survey, and Dick Hutchinson of the Colorado School of Mines, studied the ancient sites for clues to a geological mystery. Clinging to the wall of an old pit mine is a small pocket of metal ore, a remarkable type containing copper, gold, silver, and zinc. They thought that these deposits were formed when the minerals were forced into existing rock, replacing what was there before. But that process would not have produced the layered bands that they found. Sulfide band? When I first came here to Cyprus in 1962, our understanding of the origin of these rich concentrations of metals was, at best, very poor. 
We believed they had been formed within the rocks long after the rocks had been laid down by a replacement process. But the layered bands contradicted that theory, forcing them to find a new explanation. Little did they know that they were on the verge of a new scientific breakthrough. Nearby was evidence that further challenged the old theories. Geologists found large swirled rock formations referred to as pillow lavas. These they knew could only be formed as hot lava came in sudden contact with cold seawater. Could the metal deposits and the pillow lavas have formed together on the sea floor? These remarkable pictures capture a drama similar to what took place on the floor of an ancient sea. Lava hardens into pillow shapes as its molten fire is quenched by the seawater. The trail of the metal ore and the pillow lavas led to a whole new theory of how Cyprus formed, part of a revolutionary view of our planet based on the concept of plate tectonics. The Earth's crust, far from being solid, is cracked like an eggshell. The surface is broken into huge slabs or plates that slide about like a crust of lava slides over a molten lake. Geological events on a colossal scale are the result of this dynamic, evolving Earth. Mountain ranges rise as continents collide. The Himalayas were thrust upward and continue to inch ever higher as the broad arc of India pushes against the belly of Asia. Along California's San Andreas Fault, Earthquakes occur when the tension between plates is released in sudden spasms. The shearing and breaking of solid rock has formed the great scar of the Carrizo Plain. On the seafloor is the Earth's largest geological feature, an underwater mountain range that wraps the world in a jagged furrow 46,000 miles long. At this ridge, formed as the Earth's plates pull apart, Molten rock from the Earth's interior rises to become new seafloor. In the ancient Mediterranean Sea, this same fiery genesis occurred, where the African and European plates tugged against each other. Approximately 40 million years ago, the process reversed. The African plate plunged beneath the European plate, and the area that became Cyprus was pushed upward. Ancient formations from the deep sea floor became the mountains of Trodos. On its flanks rested the pillow lavas from the seabed and the deposits of metal ores. Cyprus was an important clue to the mystery of how such deposits were created. The next clue would come from halfway around the world. Japan. land of living volcanoes, fed by immense heat and molten rock flowing from the interior of the earth. The length of Japan is laced with hot springs and mud pots, an intrinsic part of the Japanese landscape. The agricultural valleys of northern Japan are famous for their rice crop, but the real wealth of the region lies beneath these rice paddies. 900 feet below the surface are a unique combination of metals. Compounds of copper, gold, silver, lead, and zinc, almost identical to the ore found in Cyprus. In Japanese, it is called kuroko, black ore. Japanese geologists speculated as early as the turn of the century 
that the deposits they were mining might have been formed by hot springs. Because no papers on the subject were translated from Japanese, Western geologists would not learn of these theories for another four decades. Preserved in the mines is further evidence that links the black ore to seafloor hot springs. Volcanic rocks mixed with the ore. A bright red rock thought to be left by a dying hot spring. Clues frozen in stone complete a theory of how the deposits formed. Drawing on their research, geologists construct a model of something no one has ever seen ago. There was hot spring activity on the seafloor. Water trickled down through fractures in the seabed created by plate action, and then, heated by volcanic rocks deep within the earth, circulated upward, carrying a variety of minerals with it. When water came spewing out of the cracks on the sea floor, the minerals carpeted the bottom. Jutting from the very top of this hypothetical hot spring were strange-looking chimneys of different sizes, stacks built by the minerals pouring out like black smoke. The Kuroko mines have now become a focal point for exploration geologists from around the world. Steve Scott from the University of Toronto first came here during the 1970s. Now he has returned with a group of his colleagues to share this unusual laboratory. The open pit was mined for over a hundred years. As they move across it, the scientists walk through what was once the interior of vents and chimneys that carried the black, metal-rich water up to the sea floor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is left behind is a rare display above ground of what they believe was a system of hot springs at the bottom of an ancient sea. Disseminated pyrite, iron sulfide. We have volcanic fragments here. You can see that they're 10 to uh, 30 centimeters in diameter, and the hydrothermal fluids came up around these to feed the black smokers, which would have been about 50 meters up there. In other words, we're standing 50 meters below the seafloor here. In 1977, on an extraordinary day for science, the evidence from Japan and Cyprus is to be confirmed. Off the coast of Mexico, at a site named 21 degrees north, the research submersible Alvin explores a dark frontier where two plates are pulling apart. In a blackness never before penetrated, the process that formed the deposits in Japan 13 million years ago, and in Cyprus, 30 million years before that. The chimneys of the hot spring are given the most obvious of names, black smokers. The metal-rich water is so hot that it melts Alvin's sensing probe. Researchers returned to the surface with the revolutionary news that the same process that formed the ancient deposits is occurring today. Scientists can now follow the telltale clues in search of other black smoker deposits. The trail leads them to the forests of northern Canada. Far from any ocean are large groupings of pillow lavas. Looking strangely like ancient cave drawings, they point the way. Two and a half billion years ago, this was the seafloor, and on it formed the richest black smoker deposit yet found, the Kid Creek Mine. Two shafts have been dug to 3,000 feet, and the ore continues still deeper. The value of the deposit is estimated at $30 billion. 
trail that began in Cyprus and led to Japan does not end here. Since the discovery at 21 degrees north, scientists have found 17 black smoker sites on the ocean bottom. Along the 46,000 miles of spreading centers that circle the globe, there are undoubtedly others. Perhaps one has begun to form another Kid Creek. Around the globe are a handful of ancient stable areas, some nearly as old as the earth itself. The most remarkable of these is in southern Africa, in a region known as the Bushveld Complex. When molten magma cooled here, it trapped within it one of the richest concentrations of metals known to man. In an area the size of Delaware are chromium, titanium, vanadium, and most importantly, platinum. Some two billion years ago, molten rock from deep within the earth welled upward through weak points in the earth's crust and pooled beneath the surface. Over the next half million years, the magma slowly cooled and the rich deposits of the Bushveld settled into a layer cake more than eight kilometers thick. The Bushveld's most extraordinary feature is its platinum. In a continuous band, not more than a foot thick, but extending for miles, is over three quarters of the world's known reserve of platinum. Though not as well known as other precious metals, the soft luster of platinum commands a price second only to gold. Hard, durable, with a high melting point, platinum will not rust or corrode. It is used to make lasers and coat razor blades. A metal is indispensable to the jeweled masterpieces of Cartier, as it is to the workings of a rocket engine. Buried together with the platinum is the mystery of how it formed. Why is this precious metal isolated in a single thin layer, the platinum at the top of the layer cake and the other metals at the bottom? The search for an answer is going on in Canada at the University of Toronto by geologist Tony Naldrit. This is a sample of the Marensky Reef, which is one of the largest ore deposits of platinum in the world. In fact, accounts for three quarters of the platinum that we know about. And as you can see, it's a layered rock with this light colored layer overlain by this uh, much darker colored layer. The platinum is contained as small specks of sulfide in this upper darker colored part. And recent research on the Bushveld complex has shown that the complex is the result of successive introductions of new magma. And it's when this new magma came into the chamber and mixed with the old magma that it caused the ore deposits of chromium and platinum to settle and form the layers which we now mine today. The process that we're talking about is very much like that which goes on in a smelter and really the Bushveld complex has acted as nature's version of a smelter. By reading the record left in the rocks, science can reconstruct events of an ancient past. The magma of the Bushveld and the hydrothermal vents of the black smokers are dramatic evidence of the immense energy in the interior of the earth. Energy that drives the planet's internal engine, inexorably creating and distributing Earth's resources. This cauldron has created the foundations of whole civilizations, past and present. Perhaps, in their search to better understand the inner workings of our planet, scientists will uncover even more valuable gifts that will direct the course of history. <laughs>